See if I can do it on camera here. So this piece has to go down under here. So what I try and do is get it just hooked under there. And we'll have to move these key stems out of the way so that I can drop down in. So this is another instance of not a great design. This is not very really easy to do. And all the time you're fighting with this back here because of all the the hooks and everything on this lever here I keep wanting to get stuck on other parts of the machine. You can't really see what I'm doing, just wiggling these key stems. Out of the way. Now it's in. So again, not the the best design, but I don't want this calculator. I really don't like how difficult all this is. What they should have done is made all the keys independent. Just have like a pin or something in the bottom of the keys so that you could um, you know you could even put these in, then just drop the keys in inside the pin and from the bottom, but can't do that, so we're stuck with this mess. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I don't think I did, but there's this lever back here. There's a screw that holds it on this side. I've taken that out so that the lever is a bit freer. Well, I probably should have started from this side because the lever is freer on the other side than it is on this side. On this side, the screw is buried all the way down in there, so you can't get it unless you take all the levers off, off here, which is another I don't like about this design, but whatever. I'm sure that's gonna fit. I think it will. We're gonna have to figure out how these interact with that lever too. I think the lever, this piece here that I'm moving, is the clearing thing. I think what that does is these fingers in here, when you when this moves up, they swing in and push the levers apart because the other levers, which are these ones, are what lock the keys down. So these go on the other side like that, and when you push the key down, it grabs on here to stay down. I think when this swings it up, up, it pushes these out of the way and releases all the keys. Let's see, this should be the last one. Of course, it's going to be the most difficult, I think, because we're right up here against the side of the case. Down there. Okay. And then once all these are in, then we've got to put the other levers in and then put the springs in, which is not going to be fun either. I really can't imagine that this is the way the service would have had to work on this calculator. If someone, a customer calls up and says they broke a key stem, and you have to do all this work just to replace one key stem. Especially if it's one of those key stems, because if it's one of these key stems, you have to take the entire keyboard out just to get down to the first row to replace those key stems. Just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but whatever. Hopefully that's on the right side there. It's probably not, so I have to redo that one. That's unfortunate. Right. Anyway, we're getting somewhere. So then these levers just just be able to slide right in there, like that. So these hopefully shouldn't be too bad. And it is important. You know, I should order those key stands before I put all these in. And one thing I also forgot to mention, um, the back, this back plate, see what has those tabs that stick out? These things right here, those are only present on the back plate. So make sure that if you're working on one of these, you put the plate with those tabs that stick out as the last one. So now comes another unpleasant part. This rod 
has to be fed through all these plates with these springs put on it in between the plates. So basically, what I want to do is lift up. Let me make sure I put it in the right hole. Make sure it's this hole. Look at that hole. Hopefully, it's this hole. Or is it this hole? Um, I have a thing about that for me. Probably actually doesn't really matter which hole it is, honestly. See that hole? I'm not sure if these are. Um, I'm gonna think about that for a minute, but I don't think it actually matters which hole. So I'm sticking with my assumption that it's the lower hole, and the reason for that is there's a hole on this piece of the frame here. You can stick the rod through it and more or less line it up with the holes in the plates. So I can stick the rod in and fish it through, and then try and get down here and fish a spring on it. And then once the spring's on it, oh, we don't want that spring. Not to put that in a minute. Oh, I see it now. It's all the way down in there. I'll have to get that out. Basically, once I get the spring on it, hopefully this one will go a little bit better. Then I can fish it through the plate. There we go. So now let's do the plate. Now I can put the next plate on. And then put the next spring on. And so on. So that's why I'm assuming it's the lower hole. I don't think it would make any difference if you did use the upper hole. Basically all these springs do is they push um, this rocker uh, to rock that way, so that way when no keys are pressed, it rocks that way and blocks the slider from going down at all, which registers at zero. And at the same time, they also push this other slider um, forward to lock the keys down. So now that key's locked down. Now if I rock the slider, see it pops back up. So that should work, and like I said, I don't think it'll matter if you do use the top hole, it should have the same effect. So I'm going to work on getting all these springs fished back on, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I got all the springs back in. Um, the two at the end are a little bit shorter than the ones in the middle. And then once you've got that fished all the way through, just push it all the way in and it'll pop up, and then it can't come back out. Um, which I guess is, that's the way it's designed, because that's the way it was when I started working on it. It was all the way up in there, and I wasn't sure how to get it out. So anyway, guess what you're supposed to do is push it down so it lines up with that hole and then pull it out, but I didn't know that when I started working on this, but now I do. Still, I don't like the design. Um, anyway, now that all those are on, hopefully we can put this piece back in, which is the back holder for these. See how that is going to go in here. Should be able to lift these up, I would think. And uh, maybe. It's probably going to involve more fighting, I assume. I really don't like the design of this machine at all. Anyway, let me fight with that for a while. Alright, so after fiddling around with that for a while, I was able to get this back in. Basically, you had to lift um, this whole thing up, and these are all attached now because of the rod that goes through there. So when you lift it up, then I was able to slide the plate underneath the pins here get the pins in and then push it back down in. I did have to loosen up this nut here, so I just pulled the chassis away enough to get the tab back down in and it slots in a little hole down there. So hopefully now I can tighten this back up and this piece has to go this way. There's a screw that goes in there. So we'll get that tightened back up and then there's a screw that goes in the end like that. So I'll put that back in. So this is the other side of the machine, the non-crank side. And this is that lever I was telling you about that goes in to clear it. I'm going to put this back in 
it says that one screw goes through here and well, there's a thin screw on the other side, but I couldn't take that one out because there are too many levers in the way. Uh, when you put this back in, the timing of this is important. This little tab here has to be above the screw, otherwise this will fall down into here and jam on the return stroke. So we'll just get this lined up here. See how this thing is on top of there? And what that little foot thing is for is the auto clearing so that on the return stroke of every cycle it hits this lever and clears the keyboard. And why it has that little thing here is this is the repeat lever so you see if I push repeat down then it pushes this up and then that foot misses down here so it won't clear every cycle. But if you don't have this above here this will swing all the way down and this long piece will jam down there. So theoretically now if I get some of these keys to latch down, which I probably can't do because they're not being held in. There we go, that one latched down. Now if I push this button, you can only see, if I push this button right here, you should see that key pop up. So I can't, and it does pop up. That was a bad example, because you couldn't see what I was doing. Down, slash down, so it's by pressing this button, by pressing this lever, I'm simulating pushing the clear button, pops back up. I wonder if this should be spring loaded. Doesn't always return properly. I'll have to check on that. But what that does is, whenever I push that down, you can see it pushes those sliders out of the way which would have the effect of clearing the keyboard. So I think what I'm going to do next is clean up the tripod's not properly. What I'm going to do next is clean up all these pieces so that way I can put the reconnect the sliders back up to um, the stamps. I'm also going to have to clean the stamps too. And once I have that done, I think I'm going to put it back in the case so that way I can reattach the springs and then crank the machine through several cycles um, naturally because without it being in the case I have to manually you know, pull on this to return the machine to its home position but once I put it back in the case the spring should do that automatically. I figured I'd clean up these dies or stamps whatever you want to call them before I hook them back up so that they're free so I can move them for now. And you can see this one here that I've cleaned up the light messing that up See this one on the end that I've cleaned up is quite a bit different than all the other ones. About probably 80 or 70 years of ink residue left on them. But some lacquer thinner in my dental pick cleans it out real nice. So go ahead and do that and then hook them back up with these linkages. So I've cleaned these off. These were all um, caked with dried grease before and actually when I went to take them apart I had to like basically pry them off, they were glued together onto the shafts down at the bottom. So now that's cleaned up, clean these up and then put that back together. Guess what I forgot to put in? This piece. It goes right here underneath all these sliding segment things here. Not sliding segments, but on, underneath all the rockers. So now I've got to take all the rockers back out, or at least try and lift them up enough to get this in. And that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So we're probably going to have to take all these back out to get this back in. It goes right around here. And I think what that's for is a lock so that when the machine is in mid-cycle, it locks it so you can't push any keys. So that's going to be annoying. So as far as these pieces down here, you have this thing, which is probably Actually, probably what actually happened first is this goes on like that. And this is going to slide in like that. And the spring on the bottom like that. I'm not quite sure why they have these, just leaves that little tiny bit of play in the 
um, hammers. Not quite sure what the point of that is, but we'll work on getting all these back in. One swing. We'll work on getting all these back in, and I think after that, I'm going to put the machine back on the base plate so I can attach the springs and run some more thorough tests. Okay, so this is starting to go back together now. Uh, I put that piece in that I forgot about. You can't really see this all the way down underneath all the rockers, but this is part of it sticking out the side here. Uh, I've cleaned up the digit wheels and put the register cover back on. Yeah, it's got a little bit of rust there, but I think it'll be okay. Um, part of this is covered up by the case anyway, so you might not see that. I've uh, repainted the keyboard plate. Of course, it's nowhere near the original color. I just went to Home Depot and saw what they had in green, and that was it. So, it'll work. Um, you can see that now the um, key stems are held straight up and down, and that's because all these rockers are rocked over and to hold them in place. Um, so if I pull the handle now, it will add zero to the register because these rockers have rocked over and are blocking the uh, segments from sliding down at all. If I put a number in here, we'll try if I can get these keys to stay down. That should be three, two, one. Make sure this is stayed up. Once I put the keyboard plate on, there's a spoon that's going to hold this up. So I pull the handle. Yeah, it didn't quite work. Not entirely surprised. Figured the keys wouldn't stay down well enough. That one worked though. But anyway, if I push total now, it should clear it out. It does. So, all I'm going to do is get all these keys aligned back up. The reason they flopped all over the place again was because um, at the end, when it clears the keyboard, um, it releases these levers so they just pop all over the place. So I'm going to get all these stood back up and hopefully when these are all stood back up I can put the keyboard plate on. But before I put the keyboard plate on I have to remember to put my total keys, uh, like the, these things on the side I took off over here to clean the rust off of them. And this is not cooperating. Now, so I have to put those back on. And that middle rescue seemed to work pretty well. There's still a couple keys that have a little bit of rust on them. Why is this not snapping? Once you get all the keys stood up, it should just snap right over. It's not cooperating for some reason. Oh, anyway, I have to play around with that for a while. There it goes. Now it's snapped over. See? See so, yeah, how they're all held in place instead of all over the place like these ones. So I'm going to straighten all those out, put these keys back on. And they're just these things that screw on right about there. And they also have these pieces that go along with them. This little, little like cup type thing that had this piece in it. I'm assuming at one point this was rubber so that when the key popped up it didn't snap against the bottom of the key plate, but now it's basically hard as a rock. I also put them back in, but I don't think they're going to do much now. So let me see if I can do that, and once I have the keyboard plate on, I should actually be able to do some math on here. Okay, so I got this back on. Usually how I do this is I um, lay the keyboard plate on, and then start with the highest row, which is 9-0 in this case, and I start pushing down on it, and as I push down on it, I wiggle the keys so to pop up one at a time all the way through. And then once I have one row done, then I push on a little bit harder and move on to the next row. It's a bit fiddly at some times, but um, if you just keep working on it, usually you can get them in without too much trouble. Um, one key, this key here, was a bit of a trouble because it's the top piece is bent a little bit, so that had a hard time coming up through the hole, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. So theoretically now, we should be able to push numbers and have them latch down. If we press the clear button, pop back up. If I push something in one row, looks pretty good. 
Let's try. And that's because I forgot to push this up first. Oh, that reminds me. Let me put that spring back on now that I have this plate on. So it's this spring, and it just goes from this little cutout here. If I can get it in there real quick. And then drops down and hooks on to that little post down there under the keyboard. And I'm not sure if I can do this on camera. I have to take this spring off to get at it. And it just goes down and hooks around. I think that's on. I'll put it on the other way. I think the other. I won't be putting it on the other way. Let me play around with that. Okay, I got that spring back on right there. What I, was, what I was saying before was the bottom piece was opened a bit too far to wrap around that with an XLR connection, but I got it on now, bent it tight. So, theoretically, we should be able to I don't hit the table, and I forgot to put the swing back on so it didn't return. Did it return? Something didn't work right. Didn't return. I'm gonna put the spring back on and we'll try it again. Here it is. I don't know why they have this two spring set up over here. They have one big long spring across the bottom and one short one across the top. So now let's try I think this button is total. Yep. And now we should be able to do this. Here we go. Total should clear. Yep. Interesting sound it makes when it runs, but. It seems to work though. Let's make sure our carries all work. There we did it. Might still be a little bit sticky. Try that again. I did that one cycle there to reset the carries. It's a little bit sticky. They want to trigger, but... I should have loosened up the time, I think. Try subtraction. Let's try. Let's put a number in here. And I think subtraction is this one. Let's see what happens. Oh, there must be a non end. Hey, that was subtraction. Pop back up though. It's just a bit stuck. Right, sometimes the paint. Um, just on the inside of the keyholes, and then the keys are stiff a little bit till that extra paint wears off. That seems to work. We can add five and subtract five. Subtraction key gets a little bit stuck. Um, seems to be working. We can try a sub tool. I think that's this button. Yeah, so you kept it in the register, but it should print it. And it did, and it kept it in the register. So that works. Portal should clear the register and print it. That seems to work. You can try non end. So that should not add, but it should print. And 
does uh, repeat. We latch that down. Oh, why didn't that clear? I don't know, and it doesn't clear afterwards. I don't know. Anyway, if we latch repeat down, we should be able to repeatedly add. So I think this is uh, pretty good now. Um, I had a bunch of oil on my hands and I was putting this plate back on so I'm going to take a piece of paper towel with alcohol on it and just try and wipe all the oil off. Uh, I probably could use a lacquer thinner since I think this is enamel paint but I'll probably just use alcohol. Get that cleaned off and then I'm going to clean up the keys and put all the keys back on. And then after that we have the case left. I don't think I'm going to paint the case right now. Um, that's not a high priority item. I'll just paint that sometime in the future. And the reason for that is I don't have any black paint right now. Okay, so I've got this thing back together. Let's get it in frame here. Um, I didn't repaint the case. I'm just going to leave that as is for now because um, I didn't feel like getting black paint in the store. And I just don't feel like painting it right now. Um, the main reason I wanted to paint the uh, key plate is because you have to take that out to paint it and it's an integral part of the calculator so you can't really use the calculator without the key plate. But this case I can take this off anytime and paint that. That's not a problem. Um, the I put a plexiglass window in here just to keep the dust out of the register. Um, I got it tipped somewhere, I'm not sure if, I think I wrote it in a comment somewhere. I don't think it was on one of my videos but on somebody else's video. Someone said to spray old ribbons with WD-40. So that's what I did here. Um, worst case is it makes a dead ribbon even more dead. So um, we'll just see if that makes any difference until I can get a ribbon for it. I uh, cleaned up the roller. It does seem to be okay to grab the paper. Yes, the paper is the ancient original paper that came with this machine. And we're just gonna use that for a test to see if this will work. So let's see. Get there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a faint impression on the ribbon. Oops. I'm not sure the ribbon's not taking up or something. This one's turning. Do I put these on upside down or something? Um, I think I might have put the ribbon on backwards. This is turning out that way, it should be turning the other way. Um, let me take a minute to fix that. Okay, so the ribbon's been reversed. Now let's see if that makes any difference. Yeah, so you can see it turning now. And you can you know, kind of readable. Now, I think with a new ribbon it would be a lot better, but I think with uh, if you do subtraction, it's supposed to do in red. Let's see. Let's try subtracting 128 and see if it. That's the right answer. Oh, I think going to subtraction mode though. That looks right though. We'll try subtotal. We'll try total. Ah, there it went out. So the total gets printed in red, not subtractions. Okay. But it did go up though. Let it go back down, sort of. So that cleared out. Mm, there's our total. You see that in the camera? I think so. It's not waste or ancient paper. Uh, let's see. 
Multiplication on here would be pretty difficult. We can do it. So we're going to do 625 times 625. We're going to enter this five times. Whoops. If you put it in repeat mode. So that was once, two, three, four, five. Clear, which is the arrow key. And then move one column over. Enter it two times. Clear, and then over once again. And then enter it six times. And that's not quite the right answer, is it? Did I enter two little times? Closer. I must have entered five times instead of six times. Should be a two three nine zero six two five, not one five, but pretty close. Might be a sticky carry. Let's see. Clear this out. Whoopsies. That was not intentional. I'm gonna have to stick that knob back on a little bit better. It's pretty loose on there. I just haven't mentioned this, but I did crack this for putting it back on. So I glued that. I glued the aid I messed up, and I glued that piece back on the subtraction key. I still need to find two uh, black three and a black four to go here. Let's try that again. Six twenty-five, and we're going to repeat. We're going to enter it five times. Move over and enter it two times. Oops, I think I messed up. Uh, let me clear that out. We'll try again. Repeat 625, but enter it five times. Five times, go out, enter here, 25, enter that two times. And then we're going to move over, enter that six times. Close again, but that one there must be a stuck carry in that position. This carriage while working before. Let's try. See if we can add a fives here, see if it carries over. It's carrying over now. Yeah, it seems to be carrying over. I think my ribbon is getting to a dry spot or something. You know what it was? I coiled all the ribbon I sprayed on this wool because that was on that side. Oops. That's probably why. And it's not that important. Anyway, let's try multiplication one more time and I think we'll call it quits on this machine. It's not really designed for multiplication, although that should still work. Now we got the right answer, 390625. So you can see it started out okay when it was on the part I sprayed with the WD-40, but once it got to the dry part, it's uh, 
not really readable. Right, that's okay. This is going to need a new ribbon anyway. Um, so it seems to work. The carry was a little bit sticky, but it loosened up after cranking it a few times. Um, and that's going to be true of some of the other carries probably too. Just a little bit sticky yet. But if you only want, as you use the machine, if they get worked back and forth, they'll loosen up over time. So I'm going to call this repair done. Um, cosmetics done a little bit of work, got to paint this and got a new ribbon and get some keys, but the actual repair I'm going to call complete. So hope you enjoyed this look at a, repairing a, in my opinion, not well designed, but it's very difficult to service, a uh, Victor adding machine. And thank you for watching. I did end up with one extra lock washer. So not quite sure where that came from, but one screw is missing a lock washer. That's not that important. Um, I also want to do a little comparison here. So this is the Victor. This is, I think is from probably the 1920s, I'd say. Not quite sure the year of this one. They did make an earlier version that had the um, cellulo cellulose or celluloid, of which called key stems with the brass rims. Um, that was before this model. Uh, I think they started making them in 1919, so it's probably 20s. I think in the 30s they came out with a smaller one. Not quite sure. Anyway, this over here is a much more advanced four-function machine from the late 50s. You can see it's a little bit smaller footprint than the Victor, but this one does automatic multiplication and division. So let's have a little look at how far these printing calculators have advanced. This is an adding machine where this is a full four-function calculator from the, probably the 20s until the 50s and the 60s. They, took over with the electric ones. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.